Welcome to the Transfusion Medicine Data Portal Support Video Series. These videos have been developed to support British Columbia's transfusion medicine staff and stakeholders in accessing and analyzing their transfusion medicine data from BC's Central Transfusion Registry. This video reviews the function and features of the Transfusion Medicine Data Portal dashboard along with the content of each graph or widget. When you log in to the TM Data Portal, you arrive at the home page. This is the dashboard. A dashboard is a set of graphics intended to provide a high-level snapshot of the current state. It tells you where you are, where you came from, and what's changed. Each graphic is managed by a control block. The combination of the graphic and the control block is called a widget. We'll begin by reviewing the layout and controls that are available for all the widgets, and then look at each widget in turn. To the outside edge of each graphic is its control panel. Inside the control panel are some options to select from. The options that are presented inside the graphic are highlighted in orange. For example, in the blood product expiry rate widget, the graphic is displaying data related to apheresis platelet and pooled platelet products. If we wish to see information about a different product, we simply click on the product of interest. And the graphic updates to reflect that product. If we wish to view more than one product, we click the one of interest and control, click, click the other products of interest. It is possible, of course, to select all products simply by clicking over and over and over again. However, for longer lists like this, an easier way to view all products is to remove the specific selections. That's done by this little icon up here which represents an eraser. By removing all selections, we by default are seeing everything. There are other features available here. If you do hover, you'll see other buttons pop up. However, with the simplicity of these uh, dashboard graphics, they're not necessary in this case. On the graphic itself, however, there are a few options that may be helpful. By scrolling over the title of the graphic, you'll notice a few buttons pop up at the top right corner of the graph. One of these on the outside allows you to maximize the image. Clicking on this opens the graph up to full size. That may be helpful if you wish to export this for uh, future use or just see it at greater detail. If you did wish to export this graphic, the same little set of buttons, the little arrow options, allows you to select export. You can choose your format, and for these dashboard graphics, PDF would probably be your most common choice here. In order to return to the full dashboard page, instead of a maximize button, in the full view we now have a restore button. The last item of interest in this top bar menu is the about text. Well, again, most of these graphics are fairly straightforward. One in particular, the RBC redistribution by month, has a little bit of um, interest in the way the data is presented. So it's a high level view, but if using the numbers, it's helpful to know exactly what numbers you're using. From the same drop down menu that you would arrive at the export, there is about. This provides a brief description of the content of the graph. For example, this is grams per month for the current and previous fiscal years, transfused only. You can click OK then to hide the about text. The last thing you will note on the graphs is values will be displayed for the topmost data. So in this case, we have two overlapping sets of data, the current year in blue and the previous year in green. 
when I'm scrolling over an area that is just representing the previous year in green, I can see the exact data, the exact value of transfused grams per month for October. When I view the current fiscal year, if I roll over an area that has that in blue, that value appears. The hidden, the underneath value for May is not available to me because it is behind the blue. That covers the general function and features of this dashboard. There's not a lot to do here, as again, the intention is for a high-level snapshot. Further details and more drilling down and more manipulation are available in the CTR reports and cubes. So, let's take a quick look at each widget now to see the kind of information that's available. The first widget in the top left is the IG transfused by month for the current fiscal year and previous fiscal year. The date range on this graphic is fixed for the fiscal year from April to March. As we talked about before, the previous fiscal year is displayed in green in the background and the current fiscal year overlays in blue on top. The default selection is to display IVIG only. To see IVIG and SCIG combined, click to control both, or click SCIG again to remove it from the selection. Or, now that only IVIG is highlighted, click SCIG to just see SCIG. This graph is fairly straightforward, showing again only transfused, no expireds or discarded. The second graphic widget available is blood product expiry rate. This is displayed as a percentage of expired product over total utilization for transfused plus expired plus discarded and shows two points. The blue arrow shows the expiry rate for the current three months. You can see from the data consideration that data is available through May 31, 2009. So the blue arrow displays March to May 2009, while the orange arrow just behind displays December 2008 to February 2009 expiry rate. The default selected products for this widget are apheresis platelets and pooled platelets. However, a small selection of other products are available. Plasma products are not included in this list because different facilities may handle expired products slightly differently. So for the sake of consistency, they are not included. The third widget we'll look at is the factor product shipped to St. Paul's. St. Paul's is the main receiver site for the factor product redistribution program and all facilities around the province can redistribute uh, close to or closer to expiring factor product down to that facility. The available products for this widget are factor 7, factor 7A, factor 8, and factor 9. And the default product for this graphic is factor 8. You'll see factor 7A is not listed in this list at the moment, and that's because no factor 7A product was redistributed to St. Paul's by these test facilities in this six-month time frame. So again, as with the expiry widget, there are two sets to compare for time frames, the current three months in the lighter green and the preceding three months in the dark green. By selecting a different product, you can see which facilities sent to St. Paul's in which given time frame. Because of the different units associated with these factor products, we recommend that only one product is viewed at a time in this widget. The last widget that we'll look at in this test, uh, test database here is the RBC utilization by month for the past 12 months. So unlike the IVIG with a fixed date set, this graphic has a rolling date set. Because our data is good through May 31st, 2009, the final month displayed here is May, and we see the preceding 12 months. We see transfused in the blue bar, and that is associated with the right-hand axis. Redistribution and expiring products are also described 
using the left axis. The default for this widget is to view O negative product only. However, you can view all products easily by selecting the clear in both control blocks. Now we're seeing all products in this health authority that were transfused, expired, and redistributed through the past 12 months. And of course, you can select your blood product of interest again. Now, in this graphic, this is where the about text is a little more helpful if you are interested in the particular numbers rather than the overall visual trend. The redistribution line is based on the final disposition of a redistributed product. So, although we are looking at test data for a specific health authority, this is not the reflective of the date that the product was shipped out as a redistributed product. This is based on the final disposition of the product when it reaches its receiver site. And this, of course, may be in a different health authority. It is possible then that the dates, uh, the shipping date and the final disposition date overlap a month. So if a large shipment was made, say at the end of November, it may not be apparent until the December data. Further information on these ships and redistributed units, of course, are available in the CTR reports and cubes to gather the actual shipping dates as required. So together, these widgets provide a high-level overview of the recent trends in a health authority's transfusion medicine products. From here, you now have the information to see how things are going, how things have been, and what your current state is. And maybe there's an opportunity to go look further at CTR reports or dig into some cubes. And that's what's coming up next. For more information about the dashboards, see Section 6 of the Transfusion Medicine Data Portal Manual. Visit the PBCO website for additional information or email the Data Portal to obtain user access forms, request training, or share any considerations and feedback. Up next, Video 5, where we'll look at the content of the CTR reports.